start that recording now. And if you do want to change your name for or turn off your video, you're welcome to do that if you don't want to be in the recording. Um, let's see, you're also, we do have CC closed captioning going on today. So if you are available or if you would like to engage that, you can click the show subtitles at the bottom of your screen. It should say CC live transcript and you should be able to click show subtitles. And you can feel free to send me a direct message if you're having any tech issues throughout. And we are going to be using the chat for questions. So if anyone has questions, we do have some designated time here for Q&A and um, we're going to save your questions for that time, but feel free to ask throughout and I'll be monitoring the chat. So um, thank you so much everyone for being here. We're really excited to have all of these amazing speakers and I'm going to pass the mic to Yoko. Thank you all for joining us today to celebrate Cordillera Day 2021. This event is co-sponsored by HITRP, or the Hawaii Committee for Human Rights in the Philippines, La Ing Hawaii, De Colonial Hunai, and Anak Bayan Hawaii. Sorry, my mute was not unmuting. So as the host of this event, we want to first ground ourselves as diasporic people living in Hawaii, which is an indigenous place that is also current, currently occupied by the US military. Many of us have ancestral ties to the Philippines or have dedicated significant time to the archipelago as organizers. We would like to extend our gratitude to our Kanaka Maoli Kabsat or siblings for joining us today in solidarity and in conversation around human rights, environmental and land struggles in the Cordillera. With that, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Ikaika Hasi, who is a Hawaiian Filipino organizer with Unite Here Local 5 and the president of Faith Action. Welcome Ikaika. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, aloha mai kako. Um, thank you very much for bringing us together. My name is Ikaika Hasi here in Hawaii, and I I wish very much that I could um, I wish that I could greet you in all, in my other native language, which is, which is Ilocano. And so I think that I need to attend your program, Rebecca. I would like to do that. So my, my family is, um, is native Hawaiian from the big island of Hawaii, where Nelson is, is living right now. Uh, and then also from uh, Iloko Sur, from Tagudin, that's where my, my Lolo and Lola come from. My, mm. my mother was raised here in Hawaii, actually not far from where I live here in Kalihi Valley. And um, she's a teacher. And uh, that, that's actually the work that brought my, my Lola to Hawaii um, uh, several decades ago. And I wanted to just say this morning, um, well, it's morning for me here in Hawaii, that I intend to not just, uh, not just uh, provide a gesture of solidarity, but also to, to learn. Um, there's a lot of learning that I need to do about the, about the efforts in, in the Cordillera uh, region and so I'm grateful for this opportunity to to do that to learn you know we're separated by uh, a great distance but we're united by a common struggle and I believe that solidarity is important because it strengthens us in all of our local communities and all of our local struggles and it helps us to build one great struggle uh, because really the the circumstances that we deal with here in Hawaii for instance regarding militarization is just a manifestation of the same pressures and the same struggles that come from the, the, the powerful, from the greedy, from those corporations, et cetera, that, that look to exploit our natural resources all around the world. And so um, I, I'm grateful for the linking up, the weaving together of these, of these struggles. Um, you know, I've learned in the past few days about the, the monument to the heroes that has been desecrated um in in your in your region and to me that's a, that's actually a good example of, of why we need to organize in this way across borders so that your heroes become our heroes and vice versa uh, that's the only way that we're going to be able to to uh, achieve the kinds of justice that we need for 
all Indigenous peoples. So thank you very much for bringing us together today. And I'm going to turn off my camera and continue to listen. Thank you. Mahalo nui. Aloha. Uh, thank you so much, Ikaika. Um, so our next presenter is Rojin Beao. Rojin is the Secretary General of Inabuyo Kalinga, a women's organization in the Kalinga province of the Cordillera region. High Chirp has a sp special tie to Rojin because she hosted our delegation in Kalinga in 2019. So now we will play a video of her talking about the history of Cordillera Day. Um, just so you know, this video is in Tagalog um, with captions. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Rodin Beyao of Inabuyo Kalinga. I will be discussing the Cordillera Day history. April 24, Cordillera Mass Movement is a historic and significant day. During this day, that Makliing Dulag was killed and Ama Pedro Dungok was attacked. Uh, bakit ba kasi inatake or bakit pinatay? Uh, ang katutubong Cordillera ay nilabanan, kinutulan yung proyekto ni uh, Ferdinand Marcos noong 1970s. Ang proyektong ito ay series of mega dams or hydroelectric power project. Kaya nunurin yung ilang mga komunidad sa probinsya ng Mountain Province at ng, siyempre, ng Kalinga. Ano? Yung World Bank na magpukunda sana ng proyekto, yung proyekto ay uh, we withdrew yung support. Nakita yung resistance, yung malakas na resistance ng uh, umili o mamamayan ng Cordillera dun sa proyekto. Si Ama Makliing Dulag, kasama ng mga iba pang pinuno ng anti-Chico Dam struggles, di, sila naman yung um, gumawa ng mga paraan, tulad ng pag-educate, pagbibigay ng pag-aaral sa kanilang katribo, kababayan, ganyan, uh, sa mga disadvantages ng pagtatay ng dam. Ginamit yung, yung katutubong kaugalian, yung pagkakaisa sa pamamagitan ng peace pack, ganyan, among different tribes ng uh, Kalinga, ng Mountain Province. Ayun, namatay si Ama Makliing Dulag dahil akala ng gobyerno kala ng kumpanya ay matatakot or magsasubmit yung opposition if they will kill their leaders pero nagkamali malaking pagkakamali ng gobyerno yung pangyayari yun lalo pa nitong sin uh, sinindihan yung nag-aapoy na galit ng mamamayan ng Cordillera doon sa proyekto at sa gobyerno mismo ni dating Pangulo Marcos from 1981 to 1984, the commemoration of the death of Ama Makliing Dulag was called Makliing Memorial. Pero dahil na lumalawak yung mass movement, dumadami yung mga organization, indigenous peoples all over Cordillera, uh, ginawa na itong Cordillera Day celebration noong 1985. So 1984, naitatag na din ang CPA or Cordillera People's Alliance na siya din nanguna doon sa celebration ng Cordillera Day since 1985. Ang Cordillera People's Alliance is one of the largest and first uh, indigenous uh, people's organization or alliance in the Cordillera region. During celebration of Cordillera Day, nag-iimbita tayo mula sa ibang sector, ano pa sector mas bahagi din ng ano pagkikipag-alliance, pagkikipagkaibigan sa iba't ibang sector, organization din. So hindi lang mula Cordillera yung uh, naiimbita during ng celebration ng Cordillera. Uh, ang iba't ibang delegado ay manggagaling sa national level, regional, and then international level. Makakatulong din yung ganoong paraan, yung exchange of experiences, yung parang sharing and yung experiences to amplify yung issue na kinakaharap nung nasa ground para naman ma malaman din nung mamamayan labas ng Cordillera ang mga issues na kinakaharap ng mamamayan. Siyempre hindi lang sa Cordillera nagsiselebrate ng Cordillera Day Celebration. May mga uh, bahagi na rin ng mundo or, or 
ibang countries na nagsa-celebrate nito like Taiwan, um, Thailand, uh, Canada, Hong Kong, ganyan. Yung mga migrant workers na from Cordillera with their support group in their in that certain countries nagsa-celebrate din ng Cordillera Day. It's more than just a gathering, uh, Cordillera Day celebration is a political statement and affirmation of our unity and solidarity uh, to continue the legacy of our heroes in defending our land, resources, and life against this action. And, syempre, um, assertion ng self-determination. Maraming salamat at good day. Uh, Rojan wanted to join us today on the Zoom. Um, however, she is having a little bit of technical difficulties, but she says she's trying to come back on. So if folks have questions about uh, the orig origins of this day, please put it in the chat and she'll try to answer them later during the forum. Uh, good morning, everyone. So next, we will have Beverly Longit, who is an original situationer. Beverly is an Igorot belonging to the Buntong Kankanae people of Ala Buntong and Sagada Mountain Province, Philippines. She is a former student leader and the former chair of the Cordillera People's Alliance. The CPA is a regional formation that serves both as an alliance of indigenous peoples, organizations, and communities, and a multi-sectoral multi alliance in the Cordillera region, Philippines. As a human rights activist, she helped found the Cordillera Human Rights Alliance while serving as the executive director of DINTEG or Cordillera Indigenous Peoples Legal Resource Center. She also serves as the International Solidarity Officer of Katribu or the National Alliance of Indigenous Peoples Organizations in the Philippines and the global coordinator of the International Indigenous Peoples Movement for Self-Determination and Liberation, among others. Um, thank you very much. Um, good morning. Um, gawis ay agaw kandata ko amin. Uh, maragsakanak, iti imbitasyon nyo uh, makinanggay kada kayo itata, dita Hawaii, numampay uh, online. Uh, iti day to ay maikatalo pulo ka dito uh, panakarambak ti Aldao Cordillera. Agyama na kadag iti nagtidnulong ng nangruna ti Coalition for Human Rights in the Philippines, Hawaii tap no maangay day to uh, panagtitipon tayo um, a pleasant uh, day to all of us uh, i thank the organizers um, especially the coalition for human rights in the philippines uh, hawaii for making this uh, gathering possible and requested me to share the general situation in the cordillera and uh, i am more than happy that you invited me to your celebration of the 37th people's cordillera day um, the theme of this year's celebration of the People's Cordillera Day is timely and appropriate to guide our discussion. Rise amidst the pandemic, leave out the Cordillera's hero's legacy in defense of land, life, and honor. Um, but to start with, um, I'd like to provide a short background on the Cordillera. Where is the Cordillera? Who are the peoples of the Cordillera? Peoples of the Cordillera. The Cordillera region is located in the northernmost part of Luzon Island in the Philippines. It is divided in six provinces, two cities, 73 municipalities, and uh, more than a thousand barangays or villages. Um, the main source of livelihood or e economic activity is um, agriculture. The Cordillera is also the only landlocked region in the country and majority populated by indigenous peoples, uh, collectively known as Igorot, meaning people of the, the mountains. Um, often, uh, we are grouped based on ethnic or ethno-linguistic identities, such as the Apayao or Isneg in Apayao, the, the Tingen or Itneg in the province of Abra, or Kalinga, where Rojin comes from, the Kalinga in Kalinga, and uh, in Mountain Province, where I belong, we are 
the Kankana Ois, Bontox, or who are also known, called as Iaplay. And then we have the Ipugaos in Ipugao, the Ibaloy in Benguet, and we also have the Bagu, the Kalanguya, or Ikalahan in the boundary areas and and or foothills of the Cordillera Mountains. Maybe many of you in Hawaii would find your links also among these people. Um, we are a culturally diverse um, people with distinct socio-political systems that define our collectivity, cooperation, and decision-making process, but we are commonly rooted in our relationship with uh, nature, with the land. These groupings, while they are convenient, uh, actually do not uh, fully reflect our particularities and diversities. Most of us identify ourselves primarily with specific communities called Ili. Literally, when you say Ili, it means the home village, the hometown, or the home territory. So each Ili or village is a self-identifying community with a specific territory, which is our ancestral land. An Ili usually consists of closely knit cluster of villages or a core village and its outlying hamlets within a more or less um, defined uh, territory. So what are the basic features of the land and resources of the Cordillera? The, the region's uh, total land area is around 1.8 million hectares with the government classifying most of this as uh, uh, forest and watershed um, reservations. It is a uh, mountainous terrain and a cool climate generally characterizes most part of the, the region. Um, the Cordillera region is rich in natural resources. It has uh, fertile soils for agricultural production. Together with the cool climate, this make it perfect for growing um, temperate uh, fruits and vegetables. And then underneath these mountains are rich mineral resources, uh, particularly gold and copper. But at the same time, we are also, we have a very extensive um, uh, source also of non-metallic minerals such as cement, lime, uh, sand, and uh, gravel. Um, the Cordillera region is also dubbed as the, uh, what do you call this, the watershed cradle of northern Luzon. Six of uh, the northern Luzon's river systems originate from the Cordillera's uh, forest. Its uh, water bearing capacity is more than sufficient for supplying the irrigation and energy requirements, not only of the Cordillera, but the entire northern Luzon. So that will include Cagayan and Ilocos. This um, capacity uh, excludes or does not include no, yung high geothermal reserves of uh, the region. Um, the region is also a, a key biodiversity area with a high rate of uh, endemic flora and fauna species. However, extractive industries, energy projects, and other government programs and militarization threaten these rich natural resources and uh, cultural diversity. So what are the issues and problems confronting the, the peoples of the, the Cordillera today? Um, yes, the region is rich in natural resources, but the majority of the people remain poor and marginalized and their interests unrepresented. A major source of conflict is the contradicting view of the state and the people on the ownership, management, and utilization of land and resources and the indigenous culture of the Cordillera. Um, so what's the conflict? So the state and private corporations treat the region as a resource base for exploitation, revenue, and profit at the expense of the people's um, self-determination and human rights. They view land as a segmented entity, hiwa-hiwalay, no? with the trees separate from the forest, minerals from the land, the water from the watershed, plants and animals from biodiversity, and the people um, from the land. At the same time, it also looks at indigenous culture and our socio-political systems as backward or savage. Thus, we should be assimilated in the wide, wider uh, modern society. Um, it discriminates, ridicules, and neglects um, the Igorot uh, based on our identity, 
but they also exploit our culture for tourism um, purposes. It determines the value of our land. It determines the value of our culture based on its um, commercial viability. So unlike for indigenous peoples, the land is viewed as a collective legacy. Our relationship with the land brings forth our identity. The land is, uh, is life. It is to be nurtured, defended for future um, generations. So at present, uh, there are various mining applications in the region. Um, mineral production sharing agreement would cover more than 100 uh, hectares. Exploration uh, permit agreement covers around more than 500,000 hectares. And then various application for financial technical assistance would cover more than 348 hectares. All these uh, would cover 979 hectares or 50% of the region's total land area. And this does not even include the areas occupied by uh, existing or ongoing uh, mining operations. So aside from mining, another problem would be energy, wherein we have uh, uh, 93 awarded energy projects and pen, uh, around 20 pending hydropower and geothermal uh, projects in the region. So if they don't mine it, they drown it. No, Despite the opposition and uh, adverse impacts of mining and energy projects on the lives and livelihood of the people and the, on, in the environment. And more often than not, our right to free prior informed consent on any project or any activity on our ancestral lands is uh, manipulated and uh, violated. Of course, militarization uh, of communities is a marked trend, especially in areas where there is active and uh, organized opposition to these projects. Um, the military, police, and uh, paramilitary um, units served as uh, investment defense force of companies. And then of course, with militarization comes human rights uh, violation. Um, today, as uh, Rojin mentioned, we honor Makling Dulag, uh, Pedro Dungok, and Ama Lumbaya, and all the heroes of the uh, Cordillera. Um, Makling Dulag uh, eloquently explains no, the value and meaning of the land. And uh, I would like to read the quote he is famous for, that you asked if we own the land and mocked us, saying, where is your title? When we ask the meaning of your words, you answer with taunting arrogance. Where are the documents to prove that you own the land? Titles, documents, proof of ownership. Such arrogance to speak of owning the land when instead we are owned by it. How can you own that which will outlive you? Only the race owns the land because the race lives forever. So um, to divide the opposition, the Marcos uh, dictatorship uh, made several attempts to bribe Makling, Dulag, and other dumb um, oppositionists. And, and the story goes that in a meeting between him and uh, Manuel Elizalde Jr., who was then the head of the Presidential uh, Assistance on National Minorities, uh, handed him an, an envelope, but Makling, Dulag refused to accept it, saying there can be one of two things in an envelope, a letter or money. Since I am illiterate, this is hardly a letter. As for money, it is only given to someone who has something to sell. I have nothing to sell, he says. So he stopped short of saying, our lands are not uh, for sale. So in these words would further galvanize unity you know, among the peoples of the Cordillera or especially the people in Kalinga in relation to Chico Dam. And the people's collective will and solidarity were victorious. It stopped the Chico Dam in the same manner that the people's unity and resolve also stopped or delayed other destructive projects in the region, such as the Cellophil Resources Corporation in Abra and Mountain Province, open pit mining in Ukab, Itogon, Benguet, the San Roque Dam in Itogon, the pull out of uh, military forces in Cordillera villages and many more. 
So it was timely that we should leave out the legacy of our Cordillera heroes in defense of land, life, and uh, honor. But then the, the situation then and now is not different. The struggle to defend the land, life, and honor continue. So when the COVID-19 um, pandemic uh, broke out, the attacks against activists, defenders, and indigenous peoples gravely intensified. Disinformation, red tagging, terrorist tagging, harassment um, perpetrated by the military, by the police, and their supporters proliferated um, through social media uh, platforms, especially <laughs> Facebook. Government agents filed trumped-up charges, uh, fabricated and malicious charges against our leaders and members, like the case of uh, Wendell Bullinget for murder, uh, our chairperson, and Sarah Dukdukan, our secretary general for cyber um, libel. Aside from that, local government units declaring the Cordillera People's Alliance as uh, uh, persona non grata, in the same manner that interagency um, mechanisms issuing resolutions to conduct um, talk hang operations against left leaning um, individuals and uh, organizations. <laughs> Even humanitarian efforts, no, like relief. Now we have the community pantries, community kitchens um, to respond to the people's needs are branded as uh, activities of terrorists as if this can cover up. Uh, governments, uh, the Duterte government's incompetence, plunder, and um, tyranny. So how do we look at all of these attacks? So these attacks are part of the government's um, systematic effort to oppress, harass, and silence activists and the people's mass movement on a national scale. The Interagency National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, or the ntfl -CAC, is responsible for the brazen and aggress aggressive red tagging of activists and cause-oriented or groups. And it is very enraging that at the core of this task force is the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, or NCIP, which is supposed to be mandated to promote and uh, safeguard Indigenous peoples' rights. So all of these attacks no, put at great risk um, the safety and security of activists and their families, including uh, our children. And of course, we all know that many already have been killed and um, arrested. Um, the state is also systematically and aggressively distorting and revising the narratives uh, on the birth and role of the people's mass movement in the region in this continuing struggle. Um, in the early morning of January 7 of this year, who did, uh, who did men, um, disguised to disguise their identity, uh, but we strongly believe our state security agents dismantled the metal uh, panels bearing the portraits of heroes uh, Makliing, uh, Dunguk, and Lumbaya in uh, Bugnay, Tinglayan, Kalinga. Uh, last December 12, the hooded men also took away the marble plaque bearing the names of these uh, heroes. Um, however, um, on April 9, the day of valor, the Butbut tribe restored the said heroes monument. So again, we see that the people's will and collective um, action persevered over red tagging and uh, political um, persecution. So how did we respond to this situation? Um, last year, the Cordillera People's Alliance and our allies uh, launched the Defend Cordillera PH uh, campaign. This is part of a wider national campaign to stop the attacks, stop the killings, re stop red tagging against activists, and to end Duterte's uh, tyranny. So it aims to inform the public of the urgent issues and concerns of uh, the communities here in the region. And this includes um, support to people's actions and alternatives to these issues and uh, concerns. It also aims to build na, um, uh, a, a stronger solidarity between peoples, communities, and groups at uh, various levels. And it is uh, encouraging to see that the people took to rise amidst the pandemic and the tyranny. So how can you help? How can other people help? So uh, you can help in various ways. One, we ask you to support uh, the continuous call on the human rights uh, 
on the UN Human Rights Council for an independent investigation on the human rights uh, situation in the Philippines, and also to support other initiatives of civil society organizations um, to do the same, like investigate um, PH. Um, two, you can write your governments to express concern about the situation in the Cordillera and in the country, um, especially if probably for you, you can urge the US government to end military aid to the Philippines. And three, um, share the information that you learned today, organize online and offline activities uh, on the Cordillera. Pwede rin kayong mag-selfie, mag-groupie, um, expressing solidarity, and these are most uh, welcome. And of course, you can always donate to the um, campaign. Um, you can also donate uh, not only in terms of uh, finances, but uh, uh, what all this manpower you can always come here and volunteer or while you are there in Hawaii you can always volunteer for the CPA. Um, I'd like to end my presentation um, with another quote from Maklin Dulag and it goes what is the most precious thing to man um, life if life is threatened what oath a man do resist this he must do otherwise he is dishonored and that is worse than death if we fight we die honorably because we are willing to fight now. Our children may live and keep this land, and the land shall become even more precious when nourished by our sweat and blood. Agbeag ti panakidangadang para itibukod a panagadang demokrasya ken wayawaya. Long live the struggle for self-determination, democracy, and freedom. Long live international solidarity. Agyama na kadakayo amin. Thank you. Agbiag. Agbiag. Anang Bev. Uh, oops. There was a slide to donate there and I lost it. Um, so now's the time. Uh, we Rebecca just dropped in a link in the chat that you can support Cordillera Human Rights Defenders through our Defend the Defenders Fund of Inter of the International Coalition for Human Rights in the Philippines, ICHIRP, which is a, what Decolonial Panay and HiChirp are a member of. And so through that, we are, for that link is specifically for human rights defenders in the Cordillera province or region, specifically for those who are, you know, the arrests, the, the safety and other needs of the activists there. Thank you so much. And then, uh, Bev also mentioned a to cut military funding to the Philippines. Uh, we spend $195 million per year at least going of our US tax dollars going to the Philippines that are directly, you know, uh, violating the human rights of people in the Philippines as a whole. Um, so please help us pass the PHRA or the Philippines Human Rights Act. And if you want to know more, humanrightsph.org. So our next uh, speaker is Nelson Salvador. Uh, for this portion, we will be screening a mini documentary about the life of Nelson, who is also online with us today. Um, he is a longtime Ilocano activist in the Cordillera region. He is currently in Hawaii seeking asylum from political persecution. Um, at the end of the video, he will be uh, unmuting and answering questions and opening up the forum with all of us. And then after that, there will be a break and then our open mic portion. I'm Nelson Jan uh, Salvador. Uh, 57 years old from uh, the Cordillera region, formerly the uh, executive director of uh, Putinolong with Emily Tiamianan for Adwami, the uh, non government organization that works with primarily the farmers, uh, indigenous peoples, and uh, marginalized fisher folks. Uh, that was basically the, the organization that I was affiliated with before uh, coming here. How did I get here? I was involved in the Protestant churches and I became a, uh, a leader of the youth of uh, the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. Actually, it started during the Marshall Day. That was actually uh, 
the turning point. My faith moves me towards working for justice issues, social uh, issues such as uh, issues of farmers, issues of uh, fisher folks, issues of indigenous peoples, uh, issues of the environment. In fact, when I was in college, uh, I graduated in 1983. During those times, those are the waning days of, of the Marcos uh, dictatorship. Uh, after graduation, walang walang employment. The the economy was so down. Walang uh, opportunities. Iyan na yung uh, diaspora ng, ng working class. Uh, paalis uh, towards out, outlooking na siya ng abroad. Puro abroad, abroad, abroad. Going. But Kaduan we started in 1983. So at that time, the opportunities of far-flung uh, communities scarce to nil. So uh, they got involved with, with communities that are marginalized. In uh, 1990, uh, my wife, fellow uh, UCCP youth, uh, we are both uh, civil engineering graduates. So being a civil engineer, my, my wife actually is an engineer of the people. There is this WAS project, this is uh, water, sanitation, and hygiene. Uh, so they, they put up uh, potable water systems. Uh, and their organization, uh, Cordillera Disaster Response and Development Services. So these are the project type of projects that uh, she was doing. And that, that's the reason why in September of 2014, she was in Abra to monitor those projects. My children would uh, would place a bet. As, as always, the, 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 the eldest win. My uh, eldest said she would be coming home on September 7th. My wife said, uh, I will be coming home over uh, August 31. My youngest would say, no, she will be coming home on August 31. Unfortunately, she, she did come home uh, September 7, but she was already in a casket. What happened was a, they call it encounter. That's according to the report of the military. Uh, between the New People's Army and uh, the 41st Infantry Battalion of the Philippine Army. They killed uh, seven uh, members of the New People's Army. Uh, there was a, uh, eight and nine casualty, uh, but those are uh, non combatants and one that is white. So when I, I got the autopsy, I, I, I asked the, the medical legal. <clears throat> I, I was interested actually, what is the time of, of, of this uh, death? But the report of, of the military is she, she was killed in September 5, between 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, midnight. When I was asking the, the human rights workers uh, what was the situation of her body, they said, it was still, uh, how do you call that? Alambot pa, uh, soft. Uh, there was a question in my mind. I would want to know if an autopsy could still determine the time of his uh, her death. Doctor said no. I could not establish that anymore because your, the body was already embalmed. He said, but I could tell what time, uh, how how long has been the body. Uh, dead when it was embalmed and she said about six hours so I, I went back to the funeral uh, parlor asked what time they have embalmed her they said it's eight o'clock in the evening of uh, September 6th so I tried to count that so she might have been killed uh, between one o'clock to two o'clock in the afternoon of September 6th not uh, between nine o'clock to twelve o'clock in the evening of September 5th why was there a, a knife cut? And uh, those things that, that uh, we, I, I, I observed. Uh, eventually, when, when I let uh, other for forensic experts uh, interpret the, the autopsy report, they said that these are uh, non gunshot wounds and uh, there is only one, one, one uh, 
conclusion, they say she was tortured and summarily executed. It was actually a very devastating portion of, of our family's life. Of course, we went to Congress, we went to military camp asking for what we were actually interested with one, one, just one document, the SPAT report of uh, the unit that did the operation. I want names of, uh, of those that operated, uh, who said who killed her, but they never did it. The lawyers advised to sue them with uh, murder, but they said if you sue for murder, you should know the name. So that was actually uh, the dead end of what happened. Pursuing uh, more questions, they said that the military said she was at the at the uh, uh, at the area where a massing gun was. Uh, Reverend Ilaga uh, pursued and asked, uh, "Are you saying that she was a massing gun uh, using a massing gun?" Yes. How could she? Uh, I mean, even even if uh, she is a true NPA, uh, they would not be issuing her a machine gun because she would not be able to carry it in the first place. It was a very small one. They really made a, a, a story, the uh, testimony of, of the people from the community, that they saw a, a woman uh, being led to the helicopter in the morning of September 6th. They thought she was taken to the military uh, um, interrogated for uh, the whole of the morning and then she was executed in the afternoon. They can't, they can't uh, actually debunk that she is not an MPA. November of last year, Kadwami uh, was identified as uh, one of the communist terrorist front organization along with CPA CDRC, the Alay Bayan Incorporated, NCCP, yeah, that 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 much. Gabriela is also in that batch. Yeah. In the TMK is also in that batch. But in that list, actually, three organizations in that list is only one Kadwami. Uh, just other two listed there are other names of Kadwami. I, I don't know if I brought Kadwami into such light. That uh, they actually uh, included the, it in their target, so I, I decided to uh, resign uh, as an AD. Uh, they continued red tagging uh, organization. It has been the pattern to name organization individuals as supporters or fronts of uh, they call it communist terrorist uh, organization. So they include a uh, legal organization into the, that list. This organization would be harassed by the military, by the police, by uh, trolls, putting their lives in danger. Again, from late 2019, they would come up with the list and then suddenly they will raid this organization, will get people, sue them with trump, trump up charges, uh, making them whatever they want to say. Uh, planting evidences, uh, planting uh, explosives. In, in my situation, I I had a very hard time when they started red tagging our organization. And my analysis is actually their real target is me. When I talked with, with my family, my my sons were, were really affected. My youngest is uh, in senior high now. Uh, had a breakdown, can't sleep, just just crying with me, not knowing it. Really had a hard time with that. He said, "All came back to me, Abra. I lost my mother. They are red tagging me now. I might lose you again." So that actually was a tipping point. I said, "If it helps you, I would resign. Maybe uh, go to Hawaii. An option, really. I I took, uh, hoping." That Duterte would uh, would ease up after five months because I know that I could uh, only stay in Hawaii for five months. Uh, for people like us that uh, they red tag, they had been and and I don't know what that mean. 
they've been asking about me in all areas uh, of Taduami. Uh, I don't know why these uh, intelligent officers are asking me in, in the communities rather than coming to, to the office and talk to me, as if testifying to the community uh, if whatever happens to me. What do you want to happen? Of course, I will need it uh, to be alive for, for my family and for the work I do. To continue to be to be a tool of, of change uh, in whatever capacity I do. And that's my life. It's where I find meaning um, that is being taken away. So that's a little bit about Nelson. Um, so now we are opening up the forum, and so. Everyone is welcome to ask questions or uh, give feedback or talk um, to all of our presenters today. So we have Nelson, uh, Rojan was able to rejoin us. Uh, we have Beverly and we have Ikaika still on, I believe, yes. So if you wanna unmute and ask your questions, that's welcome. Um, otherwise, you can type them in the chat. Nelson, um, would you like to say anything? Yeah. Name bang na bigat tayo amin. Ada dito ita. Good morning to all of us who are uh, present uh, in this activity. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I became emotional again uh, seeing the video. I uh, and but yeah, uh, harassment in the Philippines is is uh, very much uh, affecting people uh, working for uh, meaningful change in the Philippine society, and uh, I am one of them, um, and that. Uh, with the help of uh, Hawaii uh, Committee and Human Rights in the Philippines, uh, they have uh, helped me uh, how how to go about it. Because if uh, I stay here uh, as a tourist, I will be staying only in five months. So uh, we are uh, trying to uh, see how uh, I could uh, possibly. Um, stay longer because uh, harassment has um, the anti-terror law and everything uh, in the Philippines uh, would still uh, put my uh, situation in danger. So uh, yeah, um, it's very hard. Uh, People are still there, uh, human rights defenders being harassed. And uh, they need uh, help in everything, uh, in, in every uh, area of the work, of, of, of the situation, of their uh, security. Um, Cordillera Day has always been uh, a, a very uh, emotional or, or uh, part of my life because it's always time that uh, my 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 wife uh, and I would always go to Cordillera uh, Bay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, in, in in my short stay here, I would uh, I, I I try to help. Uh, reaching out to uh, Congressman Kahele of, of, of Hawaii for the support of the passage of the Philippine Human Rights uh, Act. Uh, it is a very important uh, legislation uh, that uh, the U.S. government, the U.S. Congress should come out and should, should, should uh, uh, pass uh, as it it's a uh, very, very uh, important that uh, no uh, taxpayers of, of uh, the U.S. Uh, citizens should go in uh, 
support of uh, killings uh, and of course disappearances, uh, harassment like uh, what have gone through, and uh, other human rights abuses by the Philippine military that uh, seems to be lording over uh, the Philippines right now. The Philippines is being uh, operated by task forces that are uh, even in COVID, uh, COVID response is uh, being uh, led by a task force that is led by military and uh, with the uh, lockdowns that are being uh, being used to be crackdowns of activists, it's always uh, hard for activists or human rights defenders uh, being uh, in, in the Philippines right now. And so uh, I I asked uh, and and, and uh, hope to uh, continue or, or help or ask to help in the passage of the Philippine Human Rights Act. Thank you. Agyamanak Manong. We just want to keep the floor open to questions now. If anyone else has a comment or question for Nelson or Manang Bev or for Rojin. Or for Ikaika. Or for Ikaika. Nelson, how is your family doing back home? Well, they are trying to, uh, to cope up with uh, my uh, assets because uh, my my children are now living uh, only among the three. So uh, although we have uh, the the beauty of of uh, communications right now is we can talk, we can we can mm -hmm. see each other and. Uh, we can uh, have a, a, a continue, continuing uh, conversations. But yes, uh, it's still hard. They are, uh, but although they are okay, uh, I have three uh, children, uh, all males, all, 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 yeah. Um, I have a question, uh, just because it is foreshadowing for later, but Rojan, if you can come on off of mute um, and just tell us about a little bit more about what's happening in Kalinga, um, particularly about the geothermal projects. Um, May 21 is Global Anti-Chevron Day, and for Hydra, we were hoping that we could get folks involved in a in-person action of some type somewhere um, for this day. Um, so, Rojin. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, ayun, yung Chevron companies still doing their activities in the municipality of Tinglayan. Ah, sorry, Pasil, Pasil Kalinga. And ang alam namin, actually, um, wa, expired na yung permit to um, to continue the process of doing their exploration. Pero dahil may order from DOE, Department of Energy. Um, ayun, ginagawa pa rin nila yung, may activities pa rin sila sa area. Ganyan. Tapos, uh, actually, ang community, wala silang tawag dun. Um, hindi nila makontra yung proyekto kahit na may mga opposition kasi maraming promesa or um, may scholarship program yung company sa area. 
So parang tawag doon um how can we oppose the project kung may um may opportunity naman for our children parang ganyan If, if folks don't speak Tagalog, I was doing some translation in the in the chat. Um, thank you so much for that uh, context, Rojin. Yeah. Um, I also just want to chime in and mahalo Rojin for sharing as well as Manong Bev and um, Mano Nelson and Akaika. This conversation it has been something that I've been wanting to see happen for very long now because of the, the dual issues that are happening, we, like Akaika said earlier, that even though our places span an ocean, there's so much that we share and we can learn so much from each other in our methods of protecting place and standing for land. But what um, Rojan was saying is something that feels so familiar to me and what I have heard too with um, communities that are in stand of protecting Mauna Kea, that these massive amounts of money come in to you know, a seduce community to protect projects mm -hmm. that really are not in their benefit. Um, and so I'm, I'm hoping that we can have a conversation, especially Kaika, since you're here on now, I'd love for, to hear thoughts about how to perhaps link struggles I mean, a lot of the green projects that are happening with windmills and with geothermal sound great, but they're also extractive. And I feel like I've been learning a lot from community here talking about how to speak back to that. So if there are thoughts that you have or, or ways to, to, to link efforts, I'd, I'd love to hear that from, from both sides of the Pacific. Salamat, Grace. Um, I think, uh, well, Actually, even uh, if not for the pandemic, uh, we mm. were actually um, developing a uh, an exchange program between the indigenous peoples uh, in the Philippines and in the U.S. and that would include the uh, the First Nations also of um, Hawaii, and we were supposed to uh, embark on that uh, specifically with the youth because mm. of, um, you know with the energy and uh, the youth who can probably they're more capable of uh, hiking in the mountains in the cordillera <laughs> we wanted to do that in 2019 um, mm -hmm. for cordillera day um uh but we we there were some problems and we we're supposed to do that um 2020 unfortunately because of the lockdown um we hope to still continue that exchange program with the youth for in we would have uh, uh uh, indigenous youth coming from the US, Canada, here in the Philippines for our exchange program. And probably in the warmer months <laughs> in the States, we would also bring um, probably some uh, indigenous youth also from the Philippines to go to, to the US or in, in North America to be able to join the, the campaign. Um, the other thing that we are trying to develop now also is a joint campaign in relation to specific companies. Like uh, uh, I saw in the chat in relation to Chevron, and now of course uh, uh, the um, uh, Oceana Gold and their um, and other companies operating in in the Philippines, and then of course the third will be be able to uh, what to call this bring in people to support the human rights campaign in the Philippines, in also in a manner wherein they're able to do. Um, specific um, activities in the countries where they find themselves in so not necessarily coming in here but also amplifying also the issues of uh, the countries like in the case of uh, in the u.s um, while we campaign for human rights in the philippines we also try to connect the issues of human rights in the u.s uh, well you have the campaign for black lives matter um, against racism and discrimination those can be um, uh, linked up. Of course, we can also do this. I think my last point will be we can do this linking efforts also organizationally. And I think the uh, Coalition for Human Rights in the Philippines, that's a good way to be able to, to do that. And of course, there are also uh, other organizations like I coordinate a global network of indigenous peoples uh, 
uh, community organizations and mass movements, which is the indigenous people's movement for self-determination and liberation. And there are also other global organizations like um, uh, the International League of People's Struggle. So we can, uh, as part of these uh, organizations, we can be able to link um, our struggles and efforts through activities. I mean, those are some of the things that I can think of at the moment. <laughs> Agyamanak Manang Bev, thank you so much to everyone and to Manang Grace too for sharing that. I think there's a lot of overlap, obviously, that's happening and um, we're happy that we're, we can all be here to have the conversation, which is just so necessary and really needs to be even more amplified, even more, I think, especially in Hawaii. Um, I think we're going to take a really quick break. Let's do a two minute bathroom break for anyone. Oh, I'm so sorry. question and then break. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Hi, Adding. Go ahead, Paul. Hi, thank you. Sorry for the interruption for the break. But anyways, I uh, just want to uh, recognize uh, Ms. Beverly Longman and the rest of the speakers for bringing up uh, how are we doing with our natural resources in the Philippines as we progress into the development uh, anyways, we have the notion that uh, we have the anthropocentric uh, or anthropocentronism mm. or anthropocentrism that the uh, humans is being the center of the universe, but we have this Amyanan knowledge or uh, indigenous knowledge that uh, humans are actually not the center of the universe, but we are actually... Uh, 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 only part of the main universe that exists. Um, this is also hearing from a baglan or a healer from the uh, Cordillera and Ilocos that uh, as we heal the land, we have to recognize the other universe. That's why we have this atang, we have this uh, other rituals that we do uh, in line with sustainability. We take care of the land, we take off the field. We also have this uh, if you have rice you know, on, on during our lunches, we value every grain of rice. Uh, this is what we learned from my dad, who was born from Ifugao. Kiangan um, Ifugao, I never went there yet. Uh, I was growing up in Ilocos and now in Hawaii. You should join uh, we the have change program. Change yeah. program. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I think we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> and then just to begin the capitalistic exploitation of nature, as the Chevron Notes is doing. Uh, although they have um, another environmental uh, benefits or activities as well to protect the land. However, this capitalist exploitation is similar to Hawaii, the stolen waters of Hawaii that had been uh, uh, transported instead of the community resources. It went to the um, uh, sugarcane plantations and also those private privatization of the lands. Uh, we have this... Um, uh, antithesis of uh, ju judicial justice for climate and the environment uh, uh, and then also the absolute and unrestrained private property that is uh, shared on both in Cordilleras and also in Hawaii uh, with uh, gaining uh, this uh, in economic opportunities or economic benefits. Uh, we do this, uh, as they say, uh, just with um, benefits of the people as well. Uh, but anyways, here in Hawaii and uh, with, with you in the Cordillera, we will continue to protect our land and um, we will also be join, joining you in our best uh, capabilities distantly. So also hearing the stories of Manong Nelson, Jan Salvador, the being uh, actually free from the land, uh, as we call this as paradise, um, we have... Uh, also heard about his stories of asylum. Uh, Manung Nelson, Jan Salvador, if you have any security questions or, or uh, concerns, uh, with the probably the uh, Ilocano community will be happy to assist you uh, as well, Manung. Okay, good to hear uh, a real human, you know, real stories, a direct resource. Mm -hmm. But anyways, yeah, so thank you for sharing. 
I'm happy to see you here. <laughs> we study Ilocano okay, together man. at UE. Sure. <laughs> Agbiag. Um, I'm Agbiag. just thank you so much, everyone, for your comments. Um, we do have a, still a couple more people who want to present poems and such. So I think we just want to make sure everyone has a moment to kind of reset and um, get, use the restroom and take a glass of water if you need to. And we'll come back. Let's just come back in two minutes. So everyone take a moment and we will be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Um, Again, we just want to mahalo and give an agyaman kami to all of our amazing speakers today and everyone who's here to witness and listen and share. We're really grateful for this, this space. So thank you everyone who helped organize as well. Um, it's just so important to make these connections and to continue to draw the, the lines between these stories and these um, actual situations that are happening in, in, in all places right now. Mm -hmm. um, so the mic technically for our open mic is officially open and I would like to invite Manon Grace to share a message with us. Um, Manon, are you ready? Yeah, um, I was reflecting on um, what to share today, and I was just reviewing some some thoughts. So I'll just read this because I'm in a little bit of a a lot of flow of uh, overflow at the moment. But this is a, the last uh, bit of uh, reflection that I had written earlier in an article called. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Ili Biag and Daga. And it quotes some of the Chico uh, River Dam protectors as well as Mother Petra. Behold the breasts that fed you, the mountains that gave you life. Destroy us and destroy yourselves. Our far forefathers have said it before, and I will say now. Oh, at use and good would gold be to us when it means destroying our rice fields. What good will it be to us to have glittering gold to adorn our bodies if there's no food and our stomachs will be internally famished? It's from Mother Pietra and most definitely relevant right now during COVID times. Um, I apologize that I have to read this, but this is um, what I wanna just share. Connections between the health of our bodies and land are critical for all women incubating new life everywhere but especially for those who are taught and given the privilege to nurture ancestral bonds to stored in sacred place. As a child, after packing our balik bayan boxes and saying our evening prayers, Lola Mary would share stories of evacuation on the day the Japanese bomb Baguio, her long walk home on Kennan Road, and how she carried my father on her back and held my auntie by the hand as she sought refuge during the World War II brownouts on the mountainside. She never ceased talking about the beauty of the rice terraces and her people through songs and stories. And it was often her homesickness and my reading letters from home that prompted to keep alive some connection to the Cordillera in, the adult, in my adulthood. Later in my early twenties, I remember learning more about the Cordillera land struggles against extractive mining and the story of the Chico River Dam and the struggle from attending the annual summer East Coast Grand Canals. What impressed me most about the story, aside from the fact that it was performed by dis diasporic Igorot youth, was that the bold collective action was taken by women and the villagers to defend their land. I was struck by how deeply people cared for a place and how it was the land that owned them, not the other way around. I was also struck that those of us in this generation living in the US and Hawaii struggled to keep the memory alive. We have been fortunate to learn and know our dances and play gangsa, we have been fortunate to know the taste of tapoy and the feeling of being present at the sacrifice of a chicken or a pig. But some of us still have not known yet the feeling of feeding ourselves from our own kamote, our own gabi or gulai, and that we have grown these with our own hands or the sensation of kankanai ogayam on our tongues. Most of us do not know how to chant the land back to life. And as a mother raising a child in Hawaii, away from my family, this became especially important as I decided to stay on birth and raise my child Malaya on Kapa'aina where Kanaka Maoli faced similar struggles. I remember one of my last trips with my parents back home to the Philippines of walking through the rice fields in both Dajan and Cervantes and noticing the rows of gabi or taro planted right alongside the rice fields and river. 
If I'd been anywhere else, I would have seen the taro or the kalo in Hawaiian as simply another just tuber variety. I may have also seen the taro, um, I may have also seen the taro kalo in Hawaii as simply another tuber variety. However, living in Hawaii, I understand now that this plant is far more significant as a canoe plant. And I recognize it by its other name, haloa, an older sibling that joins us as relatives across the Pacific. In fact, according to anthropology professor Stephen Akabato, the idea that the taro could be the first staple crop before rice and cordillera is not new. Taro is planted ceremoniously in the coastal locos, and it should be planted ceremonially in our homes too. If this is true, a new set of questions must be asked. What do I owe this place that has connected me, a place that has served my grounding to Malama Honua to care for Mother Earth? What is my kuleana and responsibility? I owe it to myself, to my child, to learn the stories and language of my grandmother's homes as prerequisite to becoming more informed ally. But what do I also owe to Kapai Kuhiko to rebridge our peoples? Malaya's umbilical cord and placenta remains here in Oahu, and thus it is her pursuit in Pico that is buried here. She is planted here and with others like her will fight alongside others to reclaim stolen land. Thank you. Eyo, manak manang. I just also wanted to make mention of all of our ancestors who, I'm, I apologize I didn't call in right when we got started, but I just want to remind us all that all of our ancestors are here with us right now and that we're so grateful for their protection and for their leadership in guiding us in these spaces with each other and in all of our lives in all of the work that we're doing so um i think marie would like to share a poem next so marie i'm going to pass you the mic right now hi everybody uh, my name is Marie Anamong Ramos. I'm in Okano Kankanai. I was born in Benguet, um, immigrated here with my family when I was five. My mom is from Mangkayan, and my dad is from Nongwog, Ilocosor. Um, the poem that I'm going to be sharing today was my initial reaction um, last July when Duterte signed the anti terror bill. And it was also a reflection of what was going, what is going on here um, with Hawaiian lands and thinking about my responsibility mm -hmm. as a Filipino person, as a Igorot person, as a Lucano person, um, now living and raising my family here in Hawaii. So it goes, defenders of the land, protectors of the sacred, our blood has spilled to nourish this soil. Defenders of the land, protectors of the sacred, our blood has spilled to keep these waters clean. Today, Duterte signed the anti terror bill into law and we, know what we will, and we know what will come. But we will not waver, we will not back down. We will walk this life tethered to an army of ancestors whose struggles we've inherited. This is a responsibility we do not take lightly. The people of the earth and sea are uniting. Like the promise of the sun, we rise. Like our mighty mountains, we rise. Like the nature of seeds, we rise. We rise, we rise, we rise. Agamanak Marie. Marie is an amazing poet and also has some other videos that maybe we could just drop your other videos in the chat too, if other folks want to um, keep checking. Uh, Marie's work is awesome. Um, I know that, I think Ading Paul, did you want to share something as well? Okay, so I'm just going to share about, I already partially uh, mentioned up earlier about um, the cosmogony or among Ilocanos and Amyanan, we could call the Rana is. Um, it's about also want to share about Nakaparswaan. Nakaparswaan is about the place of a Genesis 
for the place of birth. Some of us were born, born in Ilocos, and some of us were actually from the uh, mountain uh, side. The, in terms of cosmo, uh, topography, uh, so we also have the naming or what we call as panagbunyag. So sometimes when we go to US and we, we pledge to the um, American flag and to the land of citizenship, we have the opportunity to change our names. Uh, we name ourselves and we also name our cosmogeny or our cosmos. We have a reverend calling. We call Apu Init, Apu Daga. Uh, this is um, to have a direction, sense of direction on our uh, cosmos. We have uh, direction in terms of where the sun goes up and goes down, where is the wind is blowing. So we have uh, north as Amyanan, Abagatan as south, Laud as west, and Daya as east. Why did we brought this one up? Uh, as we have seen here, we're coming from the Philippines, some are coming from the US and uh, different states in the US. Uh, we also we're coming from different places at this moment. So usually we don't ask, uh, how are you? Good morning. We actually ask, uh, how are you? Uh, good morning. Papa Nam, where are you going? So we have this sense of direction. This is why we brought this one up. Uh, this one also applies to uh, where are we going in terms of democrat, democracy, liberation, uh, environmental justice, where are we going? Are we going to the right path? Um, are we going upward, the tangatang, or are we going to the kasanaan or the place of suffering? So once again, we uh, call Apu, Apu Daga, we reverend our uh, land as, the, as, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, land we don't own the land actually we actually the land owns us we will go back to the land uh, so one of the gary gary v valenciano's the song sa lupa nagmula sa lupa din babalik uh, one of his songs in 2004 um we also have uh, as mentioned earlier we have the baglan or the atang patid padara we call this as well, for example when the chevron uh, would uh, build up their uh, uh, their store or their establishment, as you will observe, we will probably also as a token, they will also honor the land by doing these rituals among the Kalingas or among the Cordillerans. So again, just want to brought out, uh, we just have to be uh, knowledgeable about, or we have to be aware of the anthropocentrism, absolute and undisturbed private properties, and the capitalist exploitation. This uh, is the one that we are going to brought out to the public, to our consciousness, to our uh, awareness that um, being ignorant to these issues of the moment will probably lead us to some back uh, or probably to the wrong direction. But the learning about the indigenous knowledge and uh, of this uh, land uh, ownership and land uh, sustainability, responsible uh, ownership, uh, probably we will progress wherever the Ilocanos are coming from, or wherever we will go, either in our land or in outside of the uh, Amyanan or the Northern Luzon. So that would be my talk. I hope uh, you are being inspired by our speakers and for the message of, we are here on in this together. I don't have to fight with ourselves, but we can actually fight for uh, among us, or we can actually unite, unite for the justice. That's it. Thank you. Eyo, agyamanak ading, agyaman kami. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom today. Um, I think we are pal. We're done with the people who signed up to give an offering of word or song. But if anyone feels like they want to share anything right now. I think we have another minute or so if anyone wants to do a last comment. Otherwise, I'm going to pass it back to Yoko for a little bit more information on how people can support all of the different organizations and programs that we talked about today. Uh, yeah, so thank you all, everyone, for coming today to learn, to celebrate, and to fight with us. If you felt moved to action today, we want you to Number one, get organized. 
join a grassroots organization. And here's a little plug. Um, High Chirp's next general meeting is on Monday, May 3rd after May Day um, and at 6.30 p.m. where we will be planning uh, for an action around the May 21 Global Anti-Chevron Day. Um, and in the comments, folks were saying uh, how Chevron is also part of what's happening in Myanmar. Um, so we can really connect a lot of struggles um, for, and it doesn't have to be that day. It could be around that day. And that's what planning and organizing is about. Um, we want people to get involved with passing the PHRA, the Philippine Human Rights Act, which will cut US military aid to the Philippines um, until the Philippines proves itself that it is not committing human rights violations. So if you want to get more information, humanrightsph.org. If you are part of an organization or know of different organizations, we want endorsers to endorsing organizations, endorse the Philippine Human Rights Act. We also want everybody to get involved in legislative action, if that's your thing, um, or if you want to push yourself to make that part of your, a thing that you can do. Um, when we do call-in days, when we talk to our legislators and get them to sign on um, to the PHRA. Um, we also want uh, folks to, and we've been plugging this the whole time, to donate to the Defend the Defenders Fund, um, particularly uh, for, because it's Cordillera uh, Day, um, this fund of ITRIP is uh, for the Cordillera region and activists um, who are affected uh, by the intense political repression there. Um, yep. uh, so if anybody else has uh, things that they want to announce, if you have actions or, or you know, want to plug your organization, absolutely. You can learn uh, Ilocano or any other Filipino language, probably, at Le Ing. Um, you can join Anakbayan Hawaii. Um, and there are other ways to support uh, directly uh, organizers in Cordilleras. Um, we can drop those in the chat. Thank you so much for being here. Agyaman kami to everyone for joining us today. I'm just going to plug Laing Hawaii really quickly because we are a language organization. Um, we've, we've been supporting Ilocano and Cebuano Visayan language um, acquisition for the new generation of um, people, young people, students, even elder people, doctors, there's all kinds of people in the community here in Hawaii who speak Ilocano or other um, other Hawaiian languages, other Philippine languages. And, um, you know, I just want to mention that if anyone in this room has other language abilities, like Ifugao language or any other of the Cordilleran languages, we also want to recognize that Ilocano can also be a language of erasure and that, you know, there are so many amazing languages of the Cordillera that we would love to support as well. So if anyone wants to even just have a night when they want to do languages of the Cordillera and people share poems and people share um, just even sayings, uh, words, that's something that we're interested in. So I'm going to just give a plug for that. And if you want to get in touch, you can follow us. Um, our web, I'll put our website right here, lainghawaii.org. And we're also on social media as Laing Hawaii. So um, yeah, mahalo to everyone. And agyaman kami to everyone for being here. And if you're interested in languages, that would be um, wonderful for us to connect. Um, I don't know, Madam Grace, do you want to plug Decolonial Penai or I don't know if you guys have anything coming up. There's a lot of amazing organizers in the room right now. So if anyone wants to share anything, please feel free. Um, I'll just offer that, you know, Decolonial Penai hasn't been really active, but one of the things that we've slowly started to do is supporting people to strengthen their voice by doing um, a writing group every other Saturday at noon. Um, that's just to support people and they're, you know, developing their spoken you know, sense of analysis and how to deliver that, but also to think out loud together. And I think that during these times with so many things happening, weaving is a very delicate act. It's a very intentional act. And so just want to encourage people to come at noon. Maria's been there, um, some other um, you know, sister friends. So I just want to encourage everyone to join us at noon on Saturdays, every other Saturday. So not this Saturday, but the following. Yeah. 
the group is not happening today. Oh, oh, oh the, the, sorry, the, the noon support writing group, but for, yeah, there you go. Um, and it's loosely, uh, the decolonial plane is loosely affiliated. So I, uh, I would just say that we self-organized. <laughs> yeah. Why do we need to brand things? But anyway. <laughs> Manang, do you have a link or um, do you want us to share your Facebook group link? I'm not sure if you're sharing that widely on the Facebook group or. Um, I can do that. I can uh, send that on later on if that's OK. Sure, yeah, Thanks. we can. We're going to follow up with links for everyone. Um, someone okay. also asked about the recording. We'll also be sharing that. I'm not sure it does. I know we're a little bit over time, so we want to just kind of respect everyone's time. I know it's still probably like sun rising in the Philippines right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, Manang Bev, did you want to have any words, any or anyone else? Manang Nelson, anyone? Okay, great. Then we'll just leave it at that. Um, We're so grateful for everyone's presence and listening and sharing of stories and just experience today. And um, as someone who is living on Hawaiian lands, but from Philippine lands originally somewhere back there, um, we are just grateful for everyone's presence to continue these connections. And I love the idea of weaving. I love the idea of all of these things coming together in a fabric, um, in a fabric of resistance and solidarity and unity. So thank you all. Ayaman kami launay. Salamat. And thank you all for getting up early in the Philippines with us. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back um, to see. <laughs> yes. Salamat. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Good morning, everyone. And morning. have a wonderful weekend.